glorify him. We exalt him in this place. Hallelujah. We lift him up. We lift you up, Father. We lift you up, Father. We magnify you today. We worship you today. Hallelujah. 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 For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. And they that dwell therein. Hallelujah. We give him glory. Come on, lift up your hearts. Hallelujah. A little further. We're going to go in a little deeper. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Jesus. Uh, come on, exalt his presence in this house right now. Hallelujah. Acknowledge that he is here. Hallelujah. Acknowledge that he is here. Acknowledge that he is here. Hallelujah. We glorify him. Uh, we magnify you, Father. We lift you today. Uh, we honor you today because you are great and greatly to be praised. Uh, you are worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Uh, we lift you today. Hallelujah. We come today, oh God, uh, with an open heart. Hallelujah. And bow down hearts and knees, oh God. Uh, we come before you today, God. Uh, lift your you, O oh God, uh, and lifting you up in this atmosphere, uh, we magnify you today. Uh, you are great and greatly to be praised. Uh, Father, we thank you right now, Lord, uh, for your presence that ever is abiding in this house. Uh, we thank you right now for moving on each and every heart today. Uh, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, uh, Father, that you will just touch every heart. Uh, Father, those, oh God, that are not here, oh God, uh, those that are bereaved today, God, we ask right now, Lord, uh, that you would touch them, oh God. Uh, those that are sick, oh God, uh, Father, that you would reach down your healing hand today uh, and move upon those, oh God, that need you. Uh, Father, we thank you right now for your presence that's ever abiding in this house. Uh, Father, we ask right now, Lord, that you would touch hearts today, God. Uh, stir up minds today, God. Uh, pull down every high thing, uh, that exalt itself against the knowledge of who you are. Uh, God, let us begin to see your glory. Uh, see the magnitude of who you are. Uh, you are great and greatly to be praised. Uh, we worship you today. Uh, we honor you today, uh, God. Uh, we lift you today. Uh, Father, we come before you today. Uh, Father, asking you, oh God, uh, to move in this house like never before. Uh, Father, send the fire of your presence today, God. Uh, Father, turn hearts today. Uh, those that need you today. Uh, those that are looking, oh God, and longing, oh God. Uh, Father, those that need deliverance today, uh, we thank you for your healing power today. Uh, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, uh, Father, that you drive back the hand of the enemy. Uh, Father, no weapon formed against this atmosphere uh, shall prosper today. Uh, and every lying tongue that rises up against us shall be condemned. We glorify you today. Father, right now, Lord, press in in this atmosphere. Father, shift it, O oh God. Father, that we can see you, O oh God. Give us a knowing in our heart that you are with us. Father, we honor you today. Father, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart, O oh God, to receive. Father, as your word goes forth, O oh God, God, uh, in the atmosphere, uh, we know that it is quick and powerful uh, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, Father, that you will begin to pull down uh, every stronghold. Uh, Father, and divide asunder, oh God, uh, everything, oh God, that is not like you. Uh, oh God, we declare your presence today. Uh, move like never before. Uh, oh Father, we stand in all of you. Uh, we stand in all of you. Uh, we glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you today. Oh God, we ask right now, Lord, that you would just move us to another place. Let no one leave here the same way they came. Oh God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would just stir up our hearts today. Stir up our hearts for your presence. Stir up our hearts for your longing. Stir up our hearts, oh God, for your spirit today. Lead us and guide us into truth and righteousness. Oh 
God, we ask in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that you would flood this atmosphere. Flood it with your presence. Flood it with your glory. Flood it with your healing power. We declare your presence today. Oh God, we exalt you. We exalt you in this house. We glorify you. We magnify you. Oh God, Oh Oh, we exalt you. Come on, lift him up in this atmosphere. Shift the atmosphere with your praise. Shift the atmosphere, oh God. Oh God, shift it. Oh God, we glorify you. We magnify you. Come on, open up your mouth, begin to praise him. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, open up your mouth. Worship team, you can come on. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to worship him. Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, for he is great and he is mighty. Come on, come on, come on. Shift the atmosphere and begin to worship him right now. He is good. He is mighty. Come on, open up your mouth. Give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah, God, you're great. God, you're mighty, you're awesome. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, we glorify your name. How many are excited to be in the place today? Hallelujah, how many are excited to be in the place today? Hallelujah, are you excited to be here? Because God is good. Hallelujah, come on, don't stop worshiping. Don't stop praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. We lift you up. I got to go by memory because this phone is acting up. Hallelujah. I just come by to, to encourage you today. Encourage you today. It's Palm Sunday. And this is a time of revering him for the things that he's done and the sacrifice he's made. Yes. This is a time to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. This is a time to celebrate the sacrifice he made. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us in John 12 that before he made his triumphant stroll or ride through Jerusalem, He stopped by a friend's house for a little dinner. He stopped by Lazarus' house. And we know the story of Lazarus. He rose, raised Lazarus from the dead. He stopped by and Lazarus and Mary and Martha, they prepared a feast for him. And he was relaxing with them. And Martha served him and Lazarus was sitting at the table with him. But Mary... Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and she began to pour an expensive oil on his feet. And the Bible tells us that she poured the oil on his feet and wiped it with her hair. Now that's a lot to unpack and I'm not going to try to do that because she's a woman and Jesus and the Jewish uh, traditions and all of that. But I'm not going to unpack that. I want you to see that she sat at the Savior's feet and poured oil on him and wiped it with her hair. She worshipped him. That was an act of worship. That was an act of worship. And then the Bible says that the smell from the perfume filled the room. It filled the room. Today I want to ask you, have you sat at the Savior's feet? Are you sitting at the Savior's feet even right now? We're in this place together, but we gather to worship. Have you come in with a repentive heart? Because you know that if we worship him with a repentive heart, when the fragrance grows up, it rises up. And it smells sweet to our Father in heaven. Have you come in with a repentant heart? Have you come in with your mind stayed on Jesus? 
Have you come in and are you at his feet today? I encourage you today. I beseech you today. I admonish you today to sit at the feet of the Savior today. Even though you're standing in this building, sit at his feet and worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Out of your heart, leave all that you came in behind and worship him. Come on and begin to open up your mouth and just begin to worship him. You're worthy, God, you're worthy. You're awesome, God, you're awesome. We lift your name, Jesus. We lift your name, oh God. Come on, come on. Open up your mouth and bless his name, bless his name. You're mighty, God, you're mighty. You're wonderful, God, you are, you are. You're wonderful, God. You're mighty, God. You're holy, God. You're wonderful, God, you are. God you are you're a wonderful God you're a holy God you're a mighty God you're a wonderful God you are is he a wonderful God is he a holy God is he a worthy God y'all a little too quiet today is he a worthy God is he a wonderful God is he a holy God? Yes. Is he a mighty God? I need you to shake yourself a little bit today. Is he wonderful? Is he your keeper? Is he your redeemer? Is he your way maker? Is he your way in and your way out? He's a wonderful God. He's a mighty God. Come on, whatever it is, is your heart's posture is today. Just lift it up. To me, he's wonderful. To me, he's awesome. To me, he's magnificent. He might be a healer for you. He might be a restorer for you. He might be a redeemer for you. But to me today, he is wonderful. He is great. He is mighty. And he is worthy of my praise. He is worthy of my praise. Never will a rock cry out in my place. Come on, I need you all to shake yourself today. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's wonderful. He's Turn wonderful. to your neighbor and say, he's great. He's wonderful. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's worthy of it all. He deserves it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Come on, I need y'all to raise up your voices. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. There is nobody like him. There is no other name. Hallelujah. He is so worthy. Are y'all ready to praise and worship today? Did y'all bring it with y'all today? I don't know y'all. I mean, the sun is shining. Did you bring your praise with you today? Yes. What did you bring with you today? He is worthy to be praised. We're going to call on his name today. Is that okay? Now, y'all know these songs. So I need you to open up your mouth and sing them with us. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious. Jesus, we have the fear. 
victory. Come on and raise it up. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Freedom one more time, say Freedom, 
freedom is mine. Freedom is mine. Freedom today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind. Freedom today is
the blood that gives me strength from day to day. And then this is my favorite part. It said, it will never, never, never lose. No matter what, it will never, never, never lose its power. Hallelujah. Because there is power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood of that sweet lamb. There is power. Power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb. You know, sometimes we get caught up on the music and what the words and what people are saying, but if we think about the words of the song, every single song that we sing, if we just get caught up right there in the lyrics of the song, the first song said, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And then it says, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. And then the second song says, victory. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. And then we went on to the next song and said, there is power. Wonder working power. In the precious blood of the lamb that was slain for you and me. We can't help but to open up our mouths and just praise him and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you sacred lamb. You came just for me. And we just want to praise you. We just want to praise you. We just want to praise you. Because you're so good. We just want to say thank you because you've been so kind. We just want to say thank you because we are so undeserving. And we just want to take this moment to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are so worthy to be praised. You are so worthy to be praised. You are so worthy to be praised. And we just want to praise you today. We just want to say thank you today. We praise you, oh God. And open up your mouth and say praise him. Praise him. I dare you to open up your mouth and praise say praise him. I dare you to lift up your voice and say praise him. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Now call on that sweet name, Jesus. Bless his name.
worthy of it all. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, come on, worthy. Praise Him. I dare you to open up your mouth. Jesus. 
Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? You know, they used to have testimony service. And they used to stand up. And they used to say, when I look back over my life, and I think of the goodness. See, when you get down to the goodness of things, See, when you look, get down to where you used to be, when you get down to what you should be, and when you look, when you get down to where you could be, oh, you say the goodness. Oh, it's the goodness. Oh, it's the goodness. Oh, it's something about the goodness. Oh, it's something about the goodness. And that sweet land that was slain. It's something about the goodness. I don't know. Maybe I'm in a wrong church today. Maybe I'm in a wrong building today. But when you take a second to think about the goodness, oh, when you think about the oh, when you think about it, when you think about all those nights, and you think about all those days, and you think about all those moments. Do you feel like you was about to lose your mind? Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you was laid up in that hospital bed, when you was laid up and you couldn't move, when your mind felt like it was going to go crazy, and then you had a moment where you thought of that goodness, because there's something about the goodness. There's something about the goodness. It's something about the blood. 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 Oh, 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 it will never, 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 it will never, never, never lose his power. Jesus, Jesus, it's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood. Oh, Jesus, it's the blood, it's the blood. It's the blood, it's the blood. It's the blood. There is power, wonder working power. And the blood, oh, it's the blood, it's the blood that keeps, it's the blood that renews, it is the blood that restores, it is the blood that heals, oh, it's something about the blood, oh, it's something about the blood, oh, it's the blood, the blood, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. It's the blood. It's the blood. Oh, it's the blood. The blood. The blood. Oh, it's the blood. Oh, it's the blood. The blood. Oh, oh, I dare you to open up your mouth. Yero moshira, yekoro moshira. Oh, it's the blood. Oh, it's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Come on, it's okay to praise him. It's okay to praise him. It's okay to praise him. It's okay to do something different today. Jesus. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I know it was the blood. For me. Oh, y'all got to make it personal in the building. You got to make it personal in the building. I know it was the blood for me. Jesus. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Oh, 
Hey, go rabanda de anda haya. Woo ka rabashi anda. Hallelujah. Hey. Woo. Yeah, Glory, hallelujah. Oh, it was the blood. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Come on, sing it one more time. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. can do better than that. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. I remember the day when there were freshers on the saints and sometimes they didn't know what to do. And they were coming to a prayer meeting. And when they came into the prayer meeting and they knew that their answer was in Jesus. They knew that they needed him. And they said, I need the oh, I need thee. How many need him today? Come on. say
brothers and sisters, sometimes we say, I need the oil. I need the Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. I come on. today. Come on. I need, I need to change. I need a revelation. grab somebody by the hand if you would and, and father i thank you for what you're doing today this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and we shall be glad in it we celebrate you today we celebrate what you have done through jesus christ we celebrate the finished work we celebrate who you are in us and through us we honor you and we give you glory and we give you praise you're the master of the ship you're the master of the sea. There is no one else like you. And Father, when the storms come, when the winds blow, you are there. And Father, we stand sturdily and we stand fast on your word and what you have done in us and through us. And today, Father, we rejoice and that we can say, Hosanna. We rejoice that we can, Lord, declare that you are God and beside you there is no other. We rejoice in the fact, Father, you have saved us and you have redeemed us with the blood of Jesus. We give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you for what you're doing in us and through us this day. For this day, Father, we will give you praise and glory and honor. This day we shall celebrate what you have done. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're about to do in our lives. We thank you, Father, for touching your people that is here today. We come as a congregation to lift your name up, to give you praise, and to thank you for what you're doing now. We thank you, Father, for stretching forth your hand and touching us and healing us and delivering us. We thank you, Father, that every demon, every demonic power has been dormant and has been void in the name of Jesus. We cast down every imagination and every high thing and exalt itself against the knowledge of you. We give you glory, Father, every pain, every ache, has to be demolished in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing right now. We praise you. We glorify you. And we thank you 
for what you're doing. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing. We thank you for saving us and delivering us. We thank you for changing us. We thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our lives even now. We give you glory. We give you praise. You are God, and beside you there is another. Let every witch, let every void witchcraft be void. Let every fraud, Father, of every enemy be, Lord, taken down. And we lift you up, Jesus. You are God, and beside you there is no other. Now, Father, stretch forth your mighty hand and do signs and wonders by that name, Jesus. And we thank you right now. Mend hearts, mend emotions. Lord, take scars out of the hearts. Fill the empty places. Give them joy unspeakable and full of glory. Only you can do it. And we thank you now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Somebody give my mighty prayer hand the praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to tell him praise him. Hallelujah. Come on, rejoice in your Lord. Rejoice in the King of glory. Hallelujah. He is God and beside him there is another. Hallelujah. <laughs> How many know God is a good God? How many desire a touch from God today? He's right here. Somebody said he's right here. You know, it's all right for man to touch you if God is using them. But sometimes you want to touch from him alone. Sometimes you want him to touch you. and You want him to move upon you. and You want him to talk to you. You want him to just give you that, that assurance that he's with you. And sometimes it just takes you just coming out and just declaring what he has said already. How many know that God is a good God? And sometimes we don't even know what to do when we are faced with burdens and we're faced with shackles and we're faced with loads. And, and this is the season, this is the time that we come in before him and we just remember what he has done. How many used to have a burden on you now is lifted off of you? Shackled by a heavy burden beneath the load of guilt and shame. But then the hand of Jesus touched me and now and now I'm no longer the same. And he touched me. Yes, he touched me. And oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Something happened. And now I know. Come on. He touched me. That was the old saying the saints used to say. Yes, he, he touched me. And oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Yes, sir. Something, I don't know what happened to you, happened. Did he make you whole? And make me whole. One more time, I want to say, shackled by a heavy burden 
beneath the load yes. of guilt and shame. Yes. Y'all remember the guilt and shame that we had? But then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am no longer the same. And what did he do? And he touched me. Yes, he'll touch you. He touched me. And oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Something. And now I know He touched me Yes, He touched me He touched me I don't know about you, but He touched me Did He touch you today? He touched me You ought to give him praise today. Come on. Come on, somebody give him praise today. Did he touch you? Did he deliver you? Did he set you free? Did he did he move you? Hallelujah. You were one way. When you came out, you came out differently. Hallelujah. My God from glory. He touched me. He changed me. He, he switched me out brought me back to her in my right mind he healed me and delivered me and set me free all oh, because that one touch one touch for the master will change your life forever somebody said one touch somebody said one touch from him <laughs> come on you just ought to take some time and just lift him up and just say lord i thank you Say, I thank you, Lord, for that one touch. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you for changing me. I thank you, Lord, that you delivered me out of darkness and you brought me into this marvelous life. Lord, I thank you for healing my body. When they said that I was going to die, something happened. Somebody touched me and it was you. When I was going to hell, somebody snatched me from the jaws of hell. Hell was about to open up. As the scripture said, hell enlarge itself to await thee at thy coming. But all of a sudden, when I was on my way, somebody snatched me from the jaw. And hell had to close up because it couldn't take me. Somebody ought to declare God praise you. Hallelujah, now I'm free. For who the Son set free is free indeed. You ought to rejoice in him. Hallelujah. All because of Jesus. He made a way. He made a way. He made a way out of no way. I couldn't get out of a prison. I couldn't get out. I was shackled. Hallelujah. With the burden of sin. But Jesus touched me. Jesus moved up on me. Jesus snatched me out of the pit. And I'm happy about it today. Hallelujah. You ought to tell your neighbor God is doing something right now. He snatched you from the jaws of hell. Hallelujah. And I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Somebody said, thank you, Father, for your mighty, mighty power. Hallelujah. And your awesome grace. Grace. Mercy renewed morning by morning. You got new mercy today. Somebody said, I got new mercy today. You're just not here by chance. You're here because the Lord brought you here. Yeah. You're in the land of the living, and you ought to give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up that power. Hallelujah. Somebody said, this is your word. It is full of power, and it is living. It has power to heal. It has power to deliver. It has power to set free. 
It has power to break through. It has power to change me. For no word from God is void of power. Somehow to give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many know that God is a great, great, mighty one? Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Come on, you can rest in him and just, just rejoice in the fact that he changed you and he delivered you. Some of us came from various backgrounds. And some of your testimonies. Some people don't know about the testimonies you had when you were being tormented by the enemy and when you were being dragged around by the enemy. When the enemy planned on killing you. <laughs> but somebody snatched you. Somebody gave you life. Somebody said, I'm going to change you. Some of you, when you were about to commit suicide, you said it's all going to be over because I can't take any more. But something, somebody said something. That something was named Jesus. <laughs> and you're here today to give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Don't you remember where he brought you from? Don't you remember when you were deep in sin and shame and Jesus brought you out. See, a lot, of, a lot of people are not talking about that now. They're always looking for blessings and all of them, but I thank God for saving me. I thank God for saving my life. I thank God when I was about to actually hit the side of the expressway, somebody snatched the wheel and brought me back. Somebody said, hallelujah. When you were left for dead, Jesus came and brought you life. And not just life, just not just regular life, but life more what? Abundantly. Somebody said, I want the abundant life. And sometimes we have to remember. We have to go back and remember because today people don't remember where he took you from and where he brought you from. Some of us as drug addicts, some of us as alcoholics. We were every kind of thing that there was, but guess what? Jesus saved us. Amen. I'm not like I was yesterday. I'm better today. I may not be where I want to be, but guess what? I'm not what I used to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Because he is wonderful. And he is great. And sometimes I just have to pause and think about the goodness of the Lord. And when you think about the goodness of the Lord, you recognize that he's been good to you. Even in the bad times. Even in the down times, even in the sad times, even in the empty times, God's still been good. He's been good to all of us, and we need to recognize that and give him praise today. You should never come to the house of God empty voice. You should always be ready to come to the God with the rest of the saints to give him praise and honor and glory for what he has done. Because he has been good. Somebody said he's been good. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. So I just want to just today, just for a brief time, just to talk about where he brought you, brought us all from. And what he's done for, for us. Somebody say amen. He's done great things. 
We sung his song sometimes that he's done great things. That's old school. He done great things. And he's done great things for all of us today. You're here not just because that you just happen to just come on the scene. God purposed you here. He ordained you here, and he has given you grace, and he has given you mercy to carry on what he has assigned you to do. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to go for just a brief time on Matthew 21, and um, I'm going to have Elder Shonda read from verse one, number 1 to verse number 11. And um, this is when Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. And it's very interesting as he entered into Jerusalem, he entered in Jerusalem to show something, to do something, and to fix something. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. And so it's necessary for us to recognize these things. And, and so um, Matthew chapter 21, verse number 1 through 11. All right, Elder Shop, go ahead. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. All of this was done, and it, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, Others cut down branches from trees and strewed them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Somebody say amen. So I want, I want you to know this, that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, it was an entrance into the final days of his transition. And this transition encompasses several things that most of us know about. And number one, it encompasses that. that he come not as just a king, but he came as a servant king. A humble king, one that will rule one day with a mighty hand. But this transition that he had to go through had first of all had to do with the fact that he had to go and prepare himself to be an ultimate sacrifice for man. We celebrate this season, which is called, they call it Easter. I don't call it Easter. I call it Resurrection Time or Resurrection Sunday. And the reason I call it that is because of the fact that we're celebrating Jesus, not Easter bunnies. We celebrate him because it is this time that he did the work that saved you and saved me. It is at this time that he saved us that we can be complete and we can be whole. And I'm going to read that in just a few minutes about that you, are, you could be whole. Because we were damaged goods. Somebody say amen. Amen. And if you're saved today, you're no longer damaged good. You're actually being grown and pruned. Because all of creation is waiting for you to be unveiled. The Bible talks about the fact that that, that all of creation is waiting for the unveiling of the sons of God or the redeemed of the Lord. And most of you need to understand that you do have power because of the fact that you have been redeemed. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. So you have power to speak. Somebody say amen. 
This is all part of what Jesus did when he came into Jerusalem to prepare himself to be the sacrificial lamb to bring about your originality. Somebody ought to say, man, everybody in today seems like they're having some kind of identity crisis. But if you're in Christ, you have no identity crisis. Your identity has been given by him and his identity is given to you. Your identity is a supernatural identity. Somebody ought to say, man. You have the power to do things that other people don't have because you are free and because you are going back to your original state that God has planned for you. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. It's time for us to recognize that, that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, he didn't come in just to be celebrated, but he came down to have a, a walk of victory over death in the conquer life. Somebody ought to say amen. Death he could conquer because of the fact that he's going to die. And when he dies, life is going to come into him and he's going to bring victory in life. And victory not just for you and me, but for every generation that comes after you and me. And it's, it's interesting how we need to understand that we don't always understand the fullness of what God has done through Jesus Christ in the finished work of the cross. Because most of us don't recognize the fact that when Jesus came in, he prepared himself to be a sacrificial lamb to literally tear his body to shreds so you and I could be whole. Ain't nobody saying nothing. This is why it was necessary for him to come because the Bible talks about the fact that all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Somebody say amen. And I want you to go to Isaiah 53 because I'm going to go down here so I can identify our problems and then I can identify our fix. Somebody say amen. Because there is some problems that we have, but we also know there is a fix for every problem because God has the answers to every situation that you have actually experienced. And it's interesting to know that if you haven't experienced some things, then that means that you haven't got to the process of pruning. Ain't nobody saying nothing. You got to experience some trouble and also the no trouble. You got to grow up in some things that maybe you don't want to experience, but you get yourself involved or, or it has come up on you by chance or come up on you because of assignment or it's come up on you because you put yourself in there. But even though you put yourself in there, even though it came up on you by chance, even though things have happened to you, the thing that you under need to understand is that God can deliver you out of them all. Because he is the God of the second chance. Amen. And so go ahead and read that. Isaiah 53, I think it's starting with verse number. It says, who has believed, verse 1, who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Somebody say amen. amen. I, 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 I want you to take, a, take note of this and, and leave that up there because I want everybody to see this. It, it talks about the fact that Jesus has went through some of the things that, and most of the things are all the things that we have went through. He was lonely. He was rejected. He was despised. He was talked about. He was bruised. He, was bit. he wasn't beautiful just to look up on. He wasn't what you call a handsome man. Somebody say amen. He was someone that you wouldn't even know had power as he walked through the crowds of Jerusalem. You wouldn't even see him out. You wouldn't even pick him out because there was nothing about him that you should desire him. He walked through the streets as a normal man. And as he walked through the streets as a normal man, what you find out is that he was not recognized until he opened his mouth. 
when he opened his mouth, something profound, profound came out of his mouth. Something that was extraordinary, something that was unusual came out of his mouth. And what came out of his mouth was kingdom business. It talked about what we should be. What God expected us to be and not who you are now. And I remember the, Mount, uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount in, in Matthew chapter number four. And it's, this is very interesting because I saw this a long time ago and was, I was reading this scripture and Jesus was doing a healing ministry. And as he, he was doing this healing ministry at the end of Matthew 23, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4, he, told me he went up on the mountain and he said he looked. And he saw the people and most of us would think that he looked at the people and saw their sicknesses and saw their diseases and saw the things that actually was upon them and the things that happened to them. But he wasn't looking at that. And as he begins to preach, he said, blessed are the pure in heart. And what he was looking at, he, what he was looking at is what they are going to become, not what they were. And most of us dwell in what we are and not looking forward to what God has for us and what are we going to become. What are we becoming like? Because in order for you to become like him, you have to have an encounter with him. And before you got an encounter with him, Jesus had to do the work so that you can have that encounter with him, which means that he had to do some three things, four things he had to do to make you have the opportunity that you are in right now, that you have an identity with God. Somebody say, I have an identity with God. Not only do I have an identity with God, I got power with God. Somebody say, I have power with God. And not only do I have a power with God, somebody say, I, I am anointed by God. And not only do I have an anointed by, anointed by God, I have a word from God. Somebody say I have a word from God. So you're fully power packed with everything that you need who God has called you to become. But Jesus had to pay the price, the ultimate price that you and I could become like him. Somebody say amen. And what we need to recognize is as he goes up on the mountain and the crowds begin to gather to him and he begins to speak. And when he begins to speak, he sees the multitude and he makes these statements and all of these statements you and I should identify with because this is who God is trying to get you to be as you mature in him. He says, blessed are the pure in heart, the blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit for they well, what? Theirs is the what? That means that you become part of the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say amen. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be what? Comforted. All the troubles, all the trials, all the situations that you find yourself in, God has given you a comforter, and his name is the Holy Ghost. Somebody say he's the Holy Ghost. He said, blessed those that are meek, for they shall what? Inherit the what? The earth. That means the earth is God's, right? In the fullness thereof. And he gives it to those that are inherited. Somebody said, I'm an inheritor. I'm, an, I'm one that will inherit the kingdom. And somebody, God is doing something. Somebody, God is doing something for me right now. Blessed are they which do what? Hunger and thirst after what? For they shall be what? Let me, let, me, let me tell you something about the hunger for the thirst of righteousness. Everything about God is righteous. That means the mind of God is righteous. The power of God is righteous. The anointing of God is righteous. Everything about him is righteous. And what, what he wants you to understand is if you seek him, you will have his righteousness dwelling in you. But you got to be hungry for it. And he understood that what they were eating was life that they lived in the earth. But God wanted to give them life that they could hunger in the heavenlies, in the supernatural, in the things of heaven, in the kingdom of God. You got to be able to see past what you are in. Because people are so stuck up in where they're at instead of looking beyond where you're at. And God has given you the opportunity and given us the opportunity to have eyes to see beyond what your situation is. Somebody ought to say amen. 
And then he says, blessed are the merciful, so they shall what? Obtain mercy. You see, there's a lot of people that are not merciful. They, they look at somebody do something to them or somebody says something to them and somebody has done something to them. They, are, they don't have any mercy. They'll say, put them in jail, put them in locks, put them in chains. Take them and do the worst thing that you could imagine. But God didn't do that to you. Somebody ought to say amen. Now, you know, before you got saved, some of us are some terrible people. Mean. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I don't know if that took a, took a nerve or what. Mean. Calculating. Manipulative. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And somebody said liar back there. But, you know, we always make these statements. I can't stand liars, but sometimes we lie ourselves. This is the kind of state we were in. Somebody say amen. To get yourself out of trouble, you'll do that, what we call a white lie. A lie is a lie. It ain't no white lies or black lies. It's just a lie. And let me kind of further identify a lie. A lie is something that intended to deceive you. Is an attribute of the devil because he is the father of lies. So I say, Amen. Amen. I can hear somebody say, Go, why don't you just move on? <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will. They shall see God. Blessed are those that have a pure heart. And God intended us to have a pure heart because of the fact that our heart is full of dry man bones. We're not pure in heart before we met Jesus. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the child, children of God. Blessed are they are persecuted for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that, that blessed are ye when men shall revive you and persecute you and say all manners of evil against you falsely for my what? And he says, Rejoice! And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, so, for so persecuted the prophets which were before you. Then he makes this statement, ye are the salts of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, where of it shall it be what? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Neither do men light a candle. Let me go to 14. It says, you are the light of the world, a city that sit on the hill that cannot be won. And so Jesus is trying to make you a light. And so there has to be a transition that has to take place because all of us, the Bible says, all of us have come short of the glory of God. Somebody said, all of us have come short of the glory of God. And let me talk to some of us religious people that think we're there. They, the Bible talks about the fact that even your greatest achievement of righteousness is nothing more than a filthy rag. Somebody say amen. It is therefore by grace where you are saved. It means that you didn't deserve it no matter how good you was, but because of God's grace, he still saved you on top of your goodness. Because even your goodness doesn't cut it. Somebody say amen. 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 It doesn't matter if you're giving out to the poor every single day, but if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. It doesn't matter about what you do. It doesn't matter how many messages you preach. It doesn't matter how many times you open up that Bible. It doesn't matter how many times you pray. If you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. And your righteousness is nothing more than a what? A filthy rag. And so, so nobody in this place can feel like they're over. So nobody in this place should feel like they're good enough. No one in this place should feel like that you deserve to be saved because none of us deserve to be saved. It's by grace that you are saved and grace alone. Somebody say hallelujah. 
It is by grace that you are saved. And, and if it wasn't for the grace of God, there go I. And what we need to understand in today's world in which we're living in, everybody think they're right in their own eyes. But there's only one that is right, and his name is Jesus. And when he came into Jerusalem, what you find is that he came not as someone to herald as a king on top of this big horse all gold up with all kinds of array of garments and stuff like that, but he came on a donkey. Somebody said he came on a donkey. A donkey was considered to be a servant animal. And he came on a donkey denoting that I came to serve mankind. I came to give them something that they never ever had before. I came to give them something that they can't even desire to have because they didn't even know about it. What? But he says unto us a child is given and unto us a son is what? Born. Somebody said hallelujah. And the guess what's going to be on his shoulder? The government shall be up on his what? shoulder. And that means that someone came. Someone, and I don't have time to go into the, the, the homolulics of Alaska because it serves as a twofold purpose. One has to do with the invisible realm and the other has to do with the visible realm. But regardless of which one you take, the son of God had to die so that you and I could be fixed. Fix you from your problems of thinking wrong. Fix you from your problem of habits that you can't overcome. Fix you from the problem of your grudge against this person and your unforgiveness against yourself and against other people to get you in a place that you can find yourself whole and complete. Somebody said hallelujah. And so in Isaiah 53, turn it back to Isaiah 53. Let's go through this transition because of the fact that you and I, if you are in this congregation today, if you are listening to me, you need to understand that Jesus died to get rid of all our flaws. Every flaw that we had, even the ones that we don't think we have, we have. Somebody say amen. Amen. Like I said, your goodness and my goodness doesn't cut it. It's only the goodness of God. That's why he said, I give you my righteousness. Because your righteousness, my righteousness don't cut it. Notice it says, but he was wounded for your one, for our one. Now, everybody understand that if you have a friend and a friend betray you, you're going to be mad. And most of us, what we would say is that I'm cutting you off. You're not my friend anymore. I'm going to let you go. Don't talk to me. Don't call me. Don't visit me. Don't even come around me because you have betrayed me. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. And you know, that's exactly what we did to God. Adam was with him. He walked with God in the cool of the day. He talked with God. He consulted with Jesus, with God. He consulted with him. He, and God fed him eternal knowledge that none of us, we, we would just, we would literally just be overwhelmed with the knowledge that Adam got from God as he walked with him in fellowship with God. But what happened? We were tempted with our own thoughts and our own ideals and our own likings. And so what we did was we betrayed God. Adam betrayed him. That means that Adam put in his mind, I'm going to do what I want to do and not what God has fellowshiped me to do. Notice my wording. God does not want a robot. He wants someone to desire who he is. And Adam decided in his mind, I'm going to betray him. And so he transgressed. Transgression means in the, in the Hebrew, it means that someone that has purposely put a separation in friendship. It means I will betray you. How many people have betrayed you? How many people that you cut off? You know what I said? Be careful what you say. How many people have you betrayed? How many people have you literally said, you are out of my life? People betray people in marriage. People betray people in relationships. People betray people on their jobs. 
looking at what they can obtain, not understanding that there is a connection between you and the other person because of the friendship, the connection, the relationship that you have with them. And what you find out is when that betrayal comes, it hurts. Doesn't it hurt? It hurts bad. Sometimes you can't sleep at night because you're emotionally, or you're emotionally tore up. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Your parents may betray you. Your children may betray you. Your grandfather, your grandpa, your grandma, your family members will betray you. But you know what God did? He made a way to repair the relationship. We betrayed him, but he implemented a program to get us back. God so loved the world that he what? Who did he give? Jesus. His son. Now notice what he says. He said, but he was wounded for our what? Now this is very important because of the fact that when a wound is made, a wound is made, most wounds are underneath the skin. You only see partial bruising that may come up out of the skin, but the wound is really made inside. And so we walk around with bruises inside, not knowing that is actually displayed a little bit outside. So you find that people withdraw from people. You, f- you find that people don't want to have a conversation with you because you don't, can't trust them because of what something so you have been betrayed before. So you look for signs of betrayal, don't you? Ain't nobody saying nothing, but it's okay. And what you find is that God didn't do that. God didn't care about your betrayal to the point where he says, I'm not going to deal with you anymore. God did not care about your betrayal to the point where he said, I'm going to eliminate, I'm going to wipe them off of the earth. Now, he thought about it. He did say, you know, I'm going to wipe them off, but guess what? He, Noah, Noah found what? Grace in his eyes. So he said, I'm not going to defend, I'm not going to do it. So if he had did that, you wouldn't be here. If he had just let everything happen the way that he was hurt by us, he would have not, we, none of us would be here. He would have started a whole nother razor, maybe not. But he was wounded. So in order for him to fix it, somebody had to be hurt. Did y'all, are y'all listening to me? In order for him to fix it the way that he was hurt, he had to put that hurt on somebody else so that he could fix you and fix me because we hurted him. And it had to be somebody that was innocent. Are you listening? Somebody had to be innocent so he can wound them so that you and I could be free. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Think about it. He wounded his son to fix the relationship between me and him, you and him, and the whole human family. He had to wound him. In order to wound him, he had to be bruised. He had to be beaten. He had to be ripped up. And so the question is, are you going to let someone back in your life? Ain't nobody saying nothing. Let's just move on. I'm going to come back to that. He was bruised for our what? Now listen to this. Most of us, when we look at iniquity, we just think about action. But we got to think about more than action because iniquity is a way in which we think wrong. It has to do with your thinking. The the word iniquity in in the Hebrew means twisted, crooked. 
And so that means that we think crooked. We were born with a crooked mind. Anybody saying nothing? All of us is born with a crooked mind. So, don't take offense to it because we all were crooked. We all had a crooked mind. That means that we did not think right. Our thinking was offline. I think it was so offline until the fact that when we looked at somebody, we always are looking at them with suspicion. Our thinking was so wrong that we had to, instead of coming to God to fill the emptiness, we had to find a drug to fill the emptiness. We had to find a man or find a woman to fill the emptiness that we felt because of the way that we were trying to feel something in our heart that filled that emptiness, that thing that wasn't trying, that thing that we did not have, that, that feeling of comfort, that feeling of, uh, of someone being there that really truly loved us. We tried to find it all in the wrong places. That's some kind of crooked thinking. When you think about the fact that somebody did something to you and the next thing you think is about how horrible you can do something worse than what they did to you back, that's crooked thinking. Am I telling the truth? I'm going to get them worse than what they got me. This is, this is payback. We feel that because life is hard and because we live in an evil world and we live in a wicked world, what we try to do is that we try to do anything to survive. Instead of coming to God, we will try to fix it ourselves. We'll rob, we'll steal, we'll cheat on our taxes. Amen. I mean, there's some joy that's coming, but I'm just telling you how we, th how we thought before Christ got a hold of our minds. Somebody drop $100, guess what we're going to do? Depending if they're watching or not, we might kick it over to the side. And wait until they, look, they, they move off and then pick it up. And then we sometimes have the nerve to say, oh, God bless me today. That's crooked thinking. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say things that we are not. We'll portray an image of who we're not. When we go to interviews, we'll put down some things that we really don't have a lot of experience on. That's some crooked thinking. Somebody say amen. And if the truth really be known, some of our thoughts are so dark we will wish we were in a different place. That's how we were born. He was bruised for our what? Our out of step thinking. We don't think right. And that does not say that every thought is, is, is wrong, but what it does say is that there's thoughts that pass by you that are dark. And sometimes we act upon those thoughts. And if we act upon those thoughts, it means that something is wrong in our thinking. But in order to do that, Jesus had to be what? In order to fix the problem with the way we think, he had to be what? Bruised. There had to be a bruising that, took in, that takes place in your way and my way of thinking so that he could straighten our way of thinking out. And the Romans chapter number says that he transformed us by the renewing of our what? So what God wants to do is change the way you think. So he puts in place a mechanism why you can change your way of thinking, and he calls it his word. Somebody said his word, the power of his word. And the chessmen of his peace was upon him. 
That means that judgment was upon everyone. Listen, you and I were born going to hell. It wasn't a matter of uh, uh, you were not born out going to hell. You were going to hell when you came out of your mother's womb. All of us. Every single one of us. Whether you believe it or not, we were on our way to hell. But thank God that he did what? Changed our direction. Somebody said direction. So we were born going to hell, but because of the fact that, that God chose us before the foundation of the world, guess what he did? He took the judgment away because of what Jesus did. The judgment for those that accept Christ have been taken away, and you no longer have to worry about going to hell. All you need to be concerned about is getting your, making sure that you stay in the place that you need to stay in. Somebody said, I'm going to heaven. And guess what? He has made other avenues. If you sin in this way, guess what? He has already made a way of escape. Somebody said he made a way of escape. Now, let me give you this last one because this last one is, is succumbs, it tells it all. And he says, by his stripes, you are our one. Somebody said, I am healed. That means you're healing your mind. You're healing your spirit and you're healing your soul. That means that your body can get healed. That means your spirit can be renewed and lie. And it means that your soul can start thinking right. All because of what Jesus did and what Jesus had done for us, you are now made whole and you are now made complete. Somebody said, I'm made complete. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen to you. All you need to do is stay in his presence. Somebody said, hallelujah. And so when he comes into the city, when he comes into the city, he comes in and everybody understand that, that he is called Messiah. But, you know, people could turn on you, right? You, they say you, you're good one day, and the next day they'll stab you in your back. Don't they? They'll smile on your face all the time. They want to take your place. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. I know y'all remember that song. Smiling faces. Somebody said hallelujah. They tell lies all the time. The person next to you might have a smiling face, but, but they may want to take your place. Amen. Amen. We might as well use that music for God. Because there's a truth to that. It's a, it's a, it's a truth to it. People are smiling your face and all the time. They want to take your place. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what we, what we find is that <laughs> y'all pull me out. Hallelujah. Let me put myself back in. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> people in this world the people in your relationships, people that you are related with, people that you know, people that you don't know, everybody is in the same boat unless you accept Christ in your life. You don't have to worry about thinking crooked when you are in Jesus. Because the finished work of the cross has everything to do with what Jesus endured. The work of the cross means that God wants to heal you right now. He wants to heal the way you think. He wants to heal the relationship that has actually separated us from God. You can't come to God unless you repent first. Somebody said, I need to repent. See, y'all are mighty slow. That means you need to kind of get in yourself that I need to repent. Somebody might say, I haven't done anything wrong. You've done something wrong. Everybody's done something. All have come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All have done wrong. All have done wrong. From the preacher to the pope to the bishop down to the person that is the least have sinned. And what God wants to do is pull you out of your sins. He wants to make you whole again. He wants to renew you. He wants to refresh you. He wants to give you a new mind, a new walk, a new talk. And many people today, all they talk about is blessings. All they talk about is, 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 is increase. But let me tell you something. Your increase is not going to save you from hell. Your increase, your, your changing, uh, your blessing today is not going to ch get you out of hell. 
Hell is waiting for you to die. It is only the grace of God that you're living today so that you can make a choice to come to Jesus. What God wants you to do is move you out of the way and let him come in and fill you with him so that you can be saved from the pit of hell. I know people don't want me to talk about hell, but I'm going to talk about it anywhere. Hell is a place that you don't want to be in. Place, hell is a place of loneliness and eternal pain and eternal punishment because of the fact you rejected him. That means that you are consistently in pain over and over again with one or many memories about why you did not accept him. And your regret will live with you throughout eternity. You cannot imagine, I cannot imagine going to hell for eternity. That there's no end to my pain. There's no end to my destruction. And I don't care if you say that. I don't care what it says. I don't believe in hell. One day, everybody that don't believe are going to believe. Somebody say amen. And the Bible even talks about how, how hell has a personality. Hell welcomes you at your coming. Hell, in Isaiah 53, Isaiah 5, it says, it awakes thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead. And many people will sit there and tell me, you should not preach that because people, you don't want to scare people to hell. Guess what? I'm at the point now of what is going on in this world. I need to tell you the truth regardless if you like it or not. If you don't change, if I don't change, we're all going to hell. And guess what? There's no way out after you get there. You will plead throughout eternity. You can cry throughout eternity, but hell will be your home forever. And there's something else about hell that most people won't, don't know. There is an eternal drop, and it keeps dropping. And as you keep dropping, it gets more tormenting and it goes throughout eternity they said bring them in and tell them that God is good he is good that's why he's trying to keep you from hell God is great that's why he's trying to keep you and I know they want to sugarcoat the gospel I can't sugarcoat the gospel I'm going to tell you just like what God says because if I don't tell you, then your blood will be upon my hands. And I'm not going to have blood, your blood upon my hands. You might not like me. You might, you might hate me. You might not ever come back again. But you will have the truth. And if you decide that you will not accept Christ in your life, then guess what? You will be eternally on this sermon today or whatever I'm telling you today. You will eternally think about that throughout eternity. I had a chance and take it. But I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough to give you the right thing to say, the, the right thing to do, enough to tell it right to your face that if you do not repent, people are trying to make the gospel about blessings. You are blessed when you give your life. Well, is, is this is resurrection week, and next week is uh, coming up as Sunday. Might as well just go ahead and unload because this is why Jesus died, that we can correct our, our hearts and our life. And one of the things that you need to know is that if you do not correct your heart and let things go and forgive people and stop shying people, I don't care about where you came from, when you came into this world. I don't care about what you, your family says. Somebody said, well, I'm this. I'm, I, I, I was born this way. You no, know, you're, you're, yes, maybe you were born this way, but now you could be born again. You don't have to sit in the same place that you were 20 years ago, 30 years ago. There's somebody in here that has a sickness as a result of rejection. Ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> and the reason why is because you won't let it go. Jesus died for you to let it go. Somebody said, I need to let it go. Some of you, you said you let it go, but you are hanging on to it. And there are some that you can't get over the hurt from the past. And I don't know why, why we just won't let it go. Nobody says it's easy to let it go, but what you need to do is understand that the first step to let it go is to confess it out. In order to let things go, you've got to let it go by saying it. The pure in heart shall what? See what? 
what that actually means is that the pure in heart keeps their heart cleansed by letting it go, by declaring it, by saying it out of your heart so that you can let it go. How else are you going to eliminate the problem out of your heart unless you say it from your heart? What's in a man defiles him. So if you let it out of your heart, then guess what? You can let it go. Somebody said, I need to let it go. And then there's another issue that we have. We don't want to hear about process. Somebody said, I don't want to hear about process. Jesus died for you to go to process. The only way that you're going to get to go to process is that you've got to go through tests and trials. Somebody said tests and trials. Tests and trials is why Jesus died, so that you could be processed, so that you could know the God that you serve. Because if you were never sick, how do you know he's a healer? If you never had anybody come against you, how do you know that he can fight your battles? If you have, ne if you've never had anybody in your life that actually tried to harm you, how do you know that he's a deliverer? How do you know that God is a God that will deliver you out of every situation if you are never in the situation? How is it that you can say that he's your comforter when you've never been comfortless? When you've been suicidal, how do you know that God did not bring you out of that suicide because of the fact you were so low in your heart that you were going to commit suicide, but something happened? Somebody came in and saved you for that, and now you are sitting up here worshiping and praising God, but you would never know that God will deliver you out of that if you have never been in it. You can't even be a good testimony if you have not been in the situation. And let me give you a secret. Many of us, the reason why you were put in that situation is that God was rounding you for your testimony so you could deliver somebody else later on as, as you encounter them. If you never ever, how is it that you're going to help somebody else out and you don't know what they're dealing with? That's why some people that's been a drug addict, God saves them from drugs, and then he, uh, he, he literally changed their life, and he sends them right back where they came from. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And some of us, we don't want to go back there, but God says, I'm sending you back there because that's where you came from, and somebody needs to see that you've been delivered. And this is not about a preacher anointing. This is not about being an apostle. It's not about being, it's about being a child of God that's full of power that can help somebody else out of the situation. This is why Jesus died. He rose from the dead and he went on high and he gave gifts unto men. And when he gave gifts unto men, he gave them power. When he gave them power, he gave them power in the earth to destroy the works of the enemy in people's lives. That is your assignment. This is why Jesus came into Jerusalem, that you will be king over your life because he is the one that processed so that you can actually get delivered. So that you could be whole and go back in and deliver somebody. How many people have to die before you start working? How many, people have to, how many people have to die before you start telling about your deliverance? How many people have to die before you start telling them what God is in your life? How many people have got to die because of the fact that you won't do anything? Just come to church and clap your hands. You know the reason why you don't, have carry, you don't carry a power outside of the church is because you just come to church. That's all. Anyway, say nothing. I know y'all wanted to shout. We might shout next week. <laughs> but it's, uh, today is real serious. I'm, real, I'm, I'm being real serious with you because of the fact that most of us are not watching. You're not watching what's going on. You're analyzing, but you're not watching. You're not watching the nations. You're not watching Israel. You're not watching what's happening. And if you don't believe anything else, if you look at Matthew 24, you'll find everything that Matthew 24 is happening. That should tell you something.
It's all right to have a life and do some things in life. But it's not all right if you don't testify about Jesus. It's all right to go out in the highways and byways. And while you're the highways and byways, do what you do. But it's not all right while you're out there and somebody need a touch that you're not available to touch them. It's all right for you to sit in the movie house and eat your popcorn. But if somebody's sick, you should be able to pray for them without spitting and rolling on the floor. <laughs> it's all right to show them that the God in you is working as a testimony. Put me um, um, Isaiah 53 back up. The last one, by stripes, you are healed. But he was wounded for our transgression. Let's all read it together. But he was what? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement is not going to stand for evil in his sight. 